Hello traders, this is Shlomo Cooper and we are with another Wall Street preview ahead of the opening bell. Another day, another record high and the Dow Jones, let's put the diamond, the DIA, the ETF that tracks the, the Dow Jones on the chart, rocketed higher yesterday with gains of 0.7% but please, please don't get in that trap. You have to understand, let's even Take a look on the daily chart, which uh, Dow Jones has a great ten tendency to go higher, a great uptrend, but you have to understand really that, and this one is important, the Dow Jones is the most misleading index in the history of the market. It's a price-weighted average, which means the higher the stock price is, the higher the influence the stock has on the index. Now, yesterday, Triple M, MMM and Caterpillar, Caterpillar shot higher. Let's put MMM on the chart, uh, which advanced 5.9% and Caterpillar CAT, which rose 5%. And they gave the Dow its biggest boost after those companies reported quarterly results and gave upbeat outlooks. Now, take a look with me on Triple M. This is the five minute chart of uh, MMM. It finished yesterday at about $234 per share. What makes this stock to be the second stock in its influence on the Dow Jones? Goldman Sachs, by the way, has the biggest uh, weight on that index. On contrary to that, General Electric, GE, which is one of the biggest market cap company in the index, went yesterday 2% down, but barely had any influence on the Dow Jones as it has a low price of only, you know, $21.90 per share. Now, looking on the daily chart, and let's move back to um, the SPY, uh, the ETF that tracks the S&P 500, this bar on Monday, the red bar, actually um, was a great refreshment to Wall Street as many stocks are right now technically extended and need a price uh, reset. M many bears awakened from their winter sleep with um, the first weakness early in, the, in this week and jumped into a conclusion that the long-awaited topping process is finally here. Now I'm feeling very bad to destroy their line of thinking but a real crisis in the market never starts from the highs. And mark my words, strong markets tend to get sticky to the upside and m the market never falls from the highs. Strong and st stubborn uptrends like the one we have are not coming to their end overnight. And let me explain why? The recent uptrend created huge supply of buyers under the surface and they are willing to put more of their money to work if they get even a tiny, tiny, tiny pullback. The discipline of money managers is to buy any weakness in their favorite stocks in this market in order, you know, to cut their average basis cost rather than chase stocks higher. So the sentiment in our market is not going to flip sides overnight and it's a long, it's a long process. Only after a couple of failed bounces, the deep buyers will start to get cold feet. But right now, they are just going to jump on any weakness and will do it until it stops working. So strong markets don't collapse from the sky. You have to, re to remember that. It didn't happen in the subprime bubble back in 2007. It also didn't happen in the dot-com bubble back in early 2000. And it even didn't happen in the huge crisis in October 30 years ago in 1987. In any of these cases, there were many warning signs long before the big collapse finally occurred. So we need to still lean on the upside, the chances are much better. The market will continue higher. Use any kind of pullback to buy more.
All right, we are with Hot Stocks on the Radar, and you know, the fate of the price action in the following days is going to be very much dependent on the reaction to the earnings tomorrow night. This night we are entering the heart of the earnings season, and tomorrow is a key night with earnings from Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. Now, we have a couple of movers in the aftermarket uh, session. First of all, uh, we have uh, Juniper JNPR, Juniper Networks, which plunged more than 6.5% after the bell. The company said it was realigning its staff while offering lower than expected guidance for the current quarter. We discussed that yesterday. Not many investors are willing to stay in a stock that offers them no hope cutting their guidance and I'll wait for investors to flee today away from that stock and maybe um, to short that stock that's uh, very much dependent on the price action on the situation we, we will see live in today's uh, market action also AMD after um, after the bell fell nearly 11% and um, that was after posting its results and take a look also today on COF among the other stocks that we have on the radar for today which rose just less than 2% higher after hours and that was after the company's earnings and revenue for Q3 surpassed Wall Street expectation, expectations. Also, we have today an IPO, ABLX. By the way, we have eight IPOs today. They are, they are packed in Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. ABLX, it's based in uh, Belgium. It's a biopharmaceutical company developing a therapeutic protein treatment for human diseases. Now, its, uh, it's stock has been traded on the Euronext bristles since November 2007 so we might play this IPO a little bit uh, different have a great training day guys and I'll see you in our next video bye bye